What's going on everyone? It's Sheena, AKA Sheena Panur, your favorite veteran. I wanted to come to you all today and talk about my first contract. Now, if I feel like I've told this story a few times, but people are still kind of asking like, oh wow, I didn't know you won your first contract the first time you bid. So I just wanted to kind of go through that process of how I won my first contract without knowing a soul. Um, and I went on to win my second and third one as well. So I want to talk to you about that and how you can stay sane and what to do when you don't have any money and you don't know what you're doing for real right after the intro. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Here on the Sheenapreneur channel, I share information about government contracting, veteran business content, and other business tips. So yes, yeah, so I started um, my company, Foresight Industries, about, well, we just hit our seven year anniversary, so like, cheers to us. My company started off as like real estate and facility maintenance. That's what I thought I was going to be doing, which we still kind of do. And with the real estate, I wanted to do like property management and maybe even subcontract out some work for like some agents that I knew, real estate agents, real estate brokers or whatever, or appraisers even. I was actually in school to get my appraiser license. Can you believe that? Like your girl done done everything. Like I've tried everything. I've done everything. And just a side note, appraisal school is hard. Like that thing was rough. And you you can't bypass the system. You can't test out kind of like you do with real estate, like a real estate agent. You have to actually go to school, get the hours and be um, an apprentice. Anyway, that's not the purpose of this video. But basically I wanted to do real estate and facility maintenance services. Thought I was gonna be doing maybe like flooring or something like that. I didn't, I don't even know if I really knew for real. I just knew that I was doing real estate from, let me see, maybe 2014 to like 2017. I mean, I started my company in 2017. Um, I had a little overlap there, but I was, you know, flipping houses and doing um, wholesaling. I think I talked about that maybe in a couple other videos, but basically, yeah, I wanted to, you know, figure out how to do this thing kind of similar to how I was doing real estate. And so I had a contractor that could, he basically can grow to build a house or build a building from the ground up. So that's, that's who I used when it came to looking at some contracts for the government. So anyway, I was just found out how to look locally. I want to say I registered as, as a federal contractor first. It wasn't even Sam back then. It was FBO. And I had, uh, like my husband had put on the movie War Dogs, which is basically like what got me excited about government contracting. And then I had a conversation with um, a person that was at my old job where I used to work as a software engineer. Um, and he was like, oh, you're a black female veteran. You need to, you know, do government contracting. And I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't know what that is. So I started the binge there. And then we watched the movie War Dogs and I was like, wrecked to go, okay? And so it was FBO.gov at the time. And, you know, I registered, whatever that meant, you know, cause Sam.gov didn't exist until much later, but I registered and I may have looked at some bids. I'm not really sure. That part is a little fuzzy, but I do know I somehow ended up on the Georgia site. So I'm, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. I've been here for the duration of my business. And I went on the website, which is like Georgia procurement something. Some I'll put the link in the description, but basically it's local contracting. So it's not federal, it's local. It's everything state and below, um, like state, county, city, school system. And so somehow I found an opportunity for one of the counties to do floor waxing. And I'm like, we wax floors, you know what I'm saying? Like we did that when we did real estate, me and my contractor. It's so crazy because I remember now that it must have been due really quickly because I don't really remember what the timeline was, but I know I needed the pricing quickly and my contractor did not get back to me in time. And I hear people tell all the time that, oh, they're waiting for their contractor price, uh, price and that, you know, they're not really getting that price the the fast that they, as fast as they need it, right? And so I um, did my own pricing research because I thought I was a big girl, okay? And that didn't work out so well. So I ended up being awarded that contract and I was awarded quickly. <laughs> I didn't even go to the site visit, yo. I just was awarded the contract and it was quick because my price was so low, baby. It was bad. And I let my contractor know, hey, I won this contract, yay! For me, he was like, that price is not gonna work. So the only way for him to do it was to, I would have to come out of pocket. Like I would literally have to be paying money from my job to fund this contract. So I was like, 
I ended up finding a loophole in that particular contract where I accepted it, but then I think I had like either three days or seven days or something to cancel it. And I ended up canceling that contract. So I, I made it out unscathed. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. Because a lot of people say that, oh, if you um, you don't perform a contract, then you're going to be like booted out the whole government contracting system. And that's just it's true, but it's not true because um, this was local. So federal is a little bit different. And this was small. I mean, it was under I think I had the contract was like 10,000, uh, maybe 11,000 thousand dollars for um four times a year doing floor waxing i didn't know what the heck i was doing but you know you live and learn so um and i think my contractor may have quoted me forty thousand maybe thirty thousand something like that but way above um money that i did not have so i ended up canceling that contract second contract it was and I don't even really know for sure. I want to say that this was like a vendor type thing where they're like, hey, we want vendors to come and check out this these sites that we want to replace the flooring. And it was for uh, fire stations. They needed their flooring replaced. And some of them had never, ever had any flooring since it was built, like in the 70s or 80s. And so we we went out to the site visit, me and my contract, and we were the only ones that showed up. Sometimes you're in the right place, right time, right situation, right? So we showed up and my contractor had his measuring tape and and we went to all of those fire stations. It was like 10 or more. And they had like a couple of other buildings that they wanted us to like price or just view. So just sticking to the fire stations, um, since we were the only ones that showed up, they were just impressed by how prepared we were. And you know, just my contractor knew what he was talking about. I'm sitting there like, I'm like the, I'm like the damn secretary, like, uh. <laughs> Let me take some notes because I have no idea what's going on, right? And sometimes that's, you just got to be in the building and just see what's going on. And just so happened that this particular time I was able to, you know, like I had a little bit of understanding, but not really. Like just to be able to hear it, then I used some of that information for moving forward with other contracts. So I went ahead and measured all those locations and they asked for a price kind of like right away. And my contractor gave me a price and then I put a price. I knew to put a um, amount over it. Not really sure why I knew that, but maybe just, I won't say common sense, but maybe I just, I just knew. I don't know. So I put my price over it. My contractor ended up regretting the price, but that's neither here nor there. That didn't really affect it as much. Um, and I'll tell you what we did to kind of compensate for that um, after. But basically we were the only ones that showed up and we gave them a quote and they accepted it. Now, I think hindsight was what was unique about this particular contract was because they were using a different type of funding because they mentioned what the type of program it was, but I don't remember that was a long time ago. So, you know, I bid on that. And like I said, I bid and it was like a vendor thing. And then we showed up and now they wanted a price and boom, we, we were awarded the price. Um, I want to say that they took our price at the first time I submitted it. And so with my contractor regretting that price is because we were probably kind of low, but we were able to get, you know, everything that we needed pretty much for the amount that we submitted. And this was a six figure contract first, basically the first out the gate, because that first one didn't really count, but this one was out the gate. And so those who are, you know, new here, you don't, you may don't you may not know that I always talk about asking for an advance so my contractor said ask them for an advance to buy materials and I'm like okay and they gave it to me like they gave me the advance like without question and it was seventy thousand dollars seven zero seven zero comma zero 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 seventy thousand dollar check I actually opened my bank account with this check and that was a nightmare. So if you don't already have a bank account open, please open a business bank account because baby, that was a lot. And I don't know why I didn't have one already. I don't know what I was thinking. But anywho, I was able to get that and they were, it was a, it just so happened. I. It was a Wells Fargo check. That's why I went with Wells Fargo. <laughs> that was the only reason. And was able to basically front load this whole process because without that check, it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't have happened. And so that's also like a side note, when you're working with a contractor, my contractor was not gonna be able to afford getting the materials and also hiring people even before we got paid. Because with these one and dones where you do the thing and then it's over and it's not a continuous three, uh, you know, five year contract or whatever, you know, you're gonna to be paying a lot of money up front because you're done quickly you know and this project started in i believe february and we were done in march or april i mean we were done in less than less than 90 days and um 
and that was six figures, you know what I mean? So of course I didn't get all of that. Naturally, that doesn't, that's how, why you sub stuff out. So you can have no headache, well, not a lot of headache. And the contractor is, um, they're getting paid, they're happy, and their price is their price. That's how I do my pricing. Whatever you tell me your price is, I just add mine on top. If it's too much, it's too much, and that's just what it is. But I don't do any type of profit lit or anything like that. It's, it's whatever your price is, and then I add mine on top. So when we did that and got the advance, that was what we needed in order to start. And without that, again, we, it would not have worked. So some people say don't ask for an advance because it shows that your company is not stable but i mean damn like how it, you got to try to make it work if you don't ask you won't know but that's typical on construction like in construction it's not uncommon to ask for an advance now will will you get it i've never gotten it after that <laughs> Never! I've never gotten an advance after that. I've asked pretty much most of the time when it came to construction stuff, but most of the time they're like, no, absolutely not. But it doesn't hurt to ask. And then you have to make sure that you're not asking in a non-business professional way. It's um, We would like to request in advance to purchase materials. You can't be like, can I get some money up front? Like, please don't do that. Just, just, just don't do that because y'all gonna, y'all gonna mess it up for everybody if you start asking like that. But you can do that at the federal level and the local level. So, you know, it's just what, maybe at the federal level. Let me take, cause I know y'all be coming for me in these comments. Y'all be ready, ready to prove me wrong. But I know you can do it at the local level cause I did that, but I'm not 100% sure about the federal, but I'm sure you probably could. Just depends, right? So, so yeah, basically I wanted to discuss that those two that basically those are my first two and since you know the six figure one wasn't my very first win um but I wanted to be able to explain both of them and then we went on to win the third one too and that's when I had hired someone to do my proposal for me and just help me through that process and it was a totally different industry that I even thought I was going to be in janitorial not saying I don't love that contract because we still have it to this day hallelujah amen but it's just different Janitorial is just different. But, you know, if I did not win those three contracts in a row, I probably wouldn't believe in government contracting. So there are a lot of people who are like, I haven't won my first one yet. Or you won and you weren't able to do it. I've actually heard a few of those this past few weeks that someone won and they weren't able to perform for one reason or another. I mean, that's, you know, it is what it is. It happens. Um, and if anyone has watched my, my live that I did with Brent Archie of Archie Supplies, he talked about like, if you are awarded a contract later and um you decide you don't want to do it he's like just don't do it i was like i don't know about that brent but i mean hey it works for him that's what he's done like you don't have to sign on the federal side it's a 1449 you don't have to sign that you don't have to sign the agreement once once you're awarded you don't necessarily have to sign the agreement now unless you have a bond if you have a bid bond then you got to do it and that's a whole topic for another day but just you know be a believer. There's going to be times where you're not going to win. You're going to put in several um, and you always ask for a debrief. I thought this was like something that a lot of people knew, but you always ask for a debrief no matter what, who, even if it's a subcontract, even if you're coming in as a sub, always ask, why didn't I get it? Because it could be your pricing. Maybe you're like, oh, the government got all the money. I'm going to price this thing to the sky. And then you don't realize that you're pricing yourself out every time. So you always ask for a debrief because it could be anything. And by law, there's supposed to give it to you so you just ask so you can do better for the next time that's all you got to do there's going to be you're going to probably lose more bids than you win the point is to get to a point where you don't have to bid you want people to call you and say hey can you do this or i know a person someone else to be speaking on your behalf i know a company that does this service or sells this product so we want to bring them on and you don't have to bid you know that's the whole premise of this thing is to get to a point where you're gonna the money just to cometh the money money cometh raining down on you right I wanted to share my first essentially three contract experiences and they were literally all different. First one got canceled, second one six figures, and we were the only ones that showed up. Third one was outsourced to another person to write the proposal for me. And if I did not win, I would not have been a believer of government contracting. So you just keep it up. If you follow the steps, if you do the things, you will win. Just, you gotta be focused on the thing. And I was full, t I was working full time throughout this whole thing. I didn't retire until 2022. So throughout this whole thing from 2017, 2022, I was doing this every day. So it, you know, wife, mom, all those things, you have to make time. We all have time. I don't care if you Oprah, you have time. You got to sacrifice something else though. And sometimes that sacrifice is not going to be good. It's going to be something that's 
painful or something that you don't feel like you should be sacrificing, but it's, you know, sacrifice it once a week instead of every day, whatever your flavor is, right? I am, I'm not a therapist. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a damn guru or a coach. I'm just saying, make sure that if you're going to be in this, be fully in it. It doesn't have to be full time, but you have to make time. Okay. So, um, I want to make sure that you guys all know that we have our GovCon Moneymakers community is 100% free to sign up. The link is in the description. So we share stories. We encourage each other. We help each other out with questions. So we're at, oh my God, we're almost at a thousand people. It's so crazy. Every video I'm like, there's more and more people in there. And I'm like, yes, I love it. I love it. We want to hear the wins. Um, we want the encouragement. We want people to link up and like do business together. That's starting to happen as well. So I'm really, really grateful for that. And of course the GovCon Now course where I teach you about federal contracting, local contracting and corporate contracting. I also have a startup section for those who have not started a business and also have a whole section for my veterans where I teach you everything there is to know about government contracting, all three of those sectors, about certification, about subcontracting, and it comes with mentorship. That means that you get to communicate with me and we have monthly calls. So the reason why we do monthly calls is because you communicate with me directly with questions that you have. Like you have access to me. I done seen it all. I feel like shorty low. Like I done seen it all, pretty much done, done it all. And I want to be able to share those experiences with you. And of course, the biggest part that a lot of people find, well, two, two huge factors when it comes to our mentorship is that you can use my past performance. If you're in an industry that I am in or something that we've done, you use our past performance as a part of your past performance. And also we have downloadable documents and templates for proposals and pricing and everything under the sun um, within the course and mentorship. So make sure you check it out also in the description box. So until next time, it's your favorite veteran.